Uh, hi everyone, I'm Tasha and I am a science research student here and I just want to tell you a little bit about my research before I start. For the past two years I've been researching nutrition and its effect on co uh, cognition and I've narrowed down my topic of cognition to concentration and immediate memory recall. So uh, this is the study that I conducted a couple of months ago and this is the title. Vitamin B6 in the diets of high, of high school students and its influence on concentration, immediate memory recall, and grade point averages. So I wanted to find one specific vitamin that could, um, that affects and could po possibly enhance our cognition as well. And by cognition, I mean concentration and our memory. So I chose vitamin B6, and that's because vitamin B6 is a water-soluble vitamin, and it's needed to maintain Health, the health of our nerve, skin, and red blood cells are also needed for normal brain development and normal brain function. So vitamin B6 um, also affects our psychological and physiological processes as well because it contains precursors for neurotransmitters or starting materials for neurotransmitters in our brain that all affect our cognition. For example, acetylcholine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Acetylcholine is involved in memory consolidation while our norepinephrine is involved um, in regulating, uh, regulating our alertness and serotonin is involved in regulating our mood. So if these three neurotransmitters affect our cognition, that means that the vitamin B6 that affects, that makes these three neurotransmitters must also affect our cognition as well. So um, another reason why vitamin B6 is important to us is because it's involved in two crucial bodily functions such as glycolysis and methylation cycle. And it also controls the levels, levels of homeostasis within our body which is an amino acid, and if this gets too high, then it could lead to brain deterioration and eventually Alzheimer's with age. So I want to find out why does vitamin B6 affect me as a student and affect all of us as students. And because I know that every single day I go through all these activities and skills in school that, um, and that kind of force me to have these high levels of concentration and immediate memory recall, and I'm pretty sure we can all agree with that as well as students. So. I conducted, a, uh, so this led me to my research question, which was, how do nutrients from one's diet influence mental processes such as immediate memory recall and concentration? So I conducted a study where I looked at vitamin B6 eating habits of students, and I compared it to their memory test scores and concentration test scores and their grade point averages. So I hypothesized that eating foods with high levels of vitamin B6, they would have a, they would positively influence the test scores determining the concentration, immediate memory recall, and grade point average grade point averages of high school students. So to go about my study, I had 65 juniors and seniors in the International Baccalaureate Program in Harrison High School. So this means that all these students were highly motivated students taking rigorous classes and they were all in similar in academic standings. So to collect my data, I first informed the participants with a consent form, of course, and then I gave them this questionnaire to help me determine their body mass index, their grade point averages, their um, S, uh, their vitamin B6 eating habits and their caffeine consumption. So basically this helped me to determine their vitamin B6 eating habits and I did this by having them circle the estimate number of days that they consume the following foods which according to a researcher at Columbia University they're all high in vitamin B6 and these are whole grains, nuts, seeds, bananas, carrots, spinach, fish, meat, and eggs. So once they filled out this questionnaire which helped me to determine how much vitamin B6 was in their diet I had them take this test which is called a letter cancellation test. And basically what they had to do was go through and circle every single T and A they saw in under one minute and 15 seconds. And this tested their concentration. The second test was a modified version of the PGI memory scale. And uh, they had, the participants had to memorize a group of words and then answers, answer a series of questions afterwards. And this tested their immediate memory recall. So once I gave the participants the questionnaire to determine the writing B6 eating habits, and, their mem and gave them the memory test score and the concentration test score, I had to split up my sample size into groups based on how much vitamin B6 they ate. So the first group, so first I took the average number of day that they circled in the questionnaire that vitamin B6 was eaten, and that was three days. So I took the students who had an average of vitamin, who ate an average of vitamin B6 foods three or more days in a week, and they were considered the vitamin B6 eaters because they ate more. And then I took the students who ate an 
ate an average of vitamin B6 foods in less than three days a week, and they were considered the non-vitamin B6 eaters because they ate less. And this worked out pretty well because I had 32 participants in the vitamin B6 eater group and the 33 participants in the non-vitamin B6 eater group. So basically what I did was I compared the test scores and the GPAs of the vitamin B6 eaters and the non-vitamin B6 eaters, and I predicted that the students who had more vitamin B6 in their diets would have better test scores and higher GPAs. So my independent variable here was the habit of eating vitamin B6, and the dependent variable were the memory test scores, concentration test scores, total scores, and the GPAs. So to analyze my data, I used a man when you test to tell me if my results were significant or not. And moving into my results, I just want to remind you guys of the four main variables that I was testing, which were the memory test scores, concentration test scores, total score, and the GPAs. So just focusing on the uh, test scores for now, you can see here that the vitamin B6 eaters in purple, they all perform better than the non-vitamin B6 eaters in blue in all the categories of the total score, the memory test score, and the concentration test score. And you can actually take a look at the numbers here. They all, in fact, did perform better. Um, the vitamin B6 eaters did perform better than the non-vitamin B6 eaters. And we're looking at the level of significance for my, these results, I found that um, there was a level of significance for the relationship between eating vitamin B6 and the concentration test score. However, I did not find that significant association between eating vitamin B6 and the memory test score and the total test score. So those are my three um, main variables. And my fourth was the GPA. And I found that the average GPA for a vitamin B6 eater was a 95 versus a 92 for the non-vitamin B6 eaters. And this was significant because um, the p-value was a significant p-value. And um, so those are my four main variables. And I found that eating vitamin B6 was significantly associated with a concentration test score and the GPAs. However, I did not find a significant association between eating vitamin B6 and the memory test scores and total test scores. So in my questionnaire, I also asked about uh, different variables that could have possibly affected my results, and those were caffeine consumption, multivitamin, multivitamin consumption, and the different hours of sleep. However, I found that regardless of if a vitamin B6 eater um, had caffeine or not that morning that they took the test, ate a multivitamin, or the different hours of sleep that they had, they all performed better or so similar to the non-vitamin B6 eaters. And you can see here um, with these two columns. So to conclude, uh, my results of the man when you test analysis indicated that there was a significant asso association between the independent variable of eating vitamin B6 and the dependent variable of a uh, concentration test score and a GPA. However, I did not find a significant association between eating vitamin B6 and the memory test score and the total test score. So this means that my hypothesis was partially supported because I found that eating foods with high levels of vitamin B6 had a partial positive influence on memory, uh, immediate re memory recall, attention concentration, and grade point averages of students. And so this means that those students who were vitamin B6 eaters and those students who ate those foods that were all high in vitamin B6, their brains were better able to synthesize those neurotransmitters that I talked about earlier, such as acetylcholine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. And because they were better able to synthesize those neurotransmitters, they could perform better on those concentration tests, the memory tests, and that led them to, um, the, and because they also had higher GPAs. So they had higher concentration levels, higher memory levels, and so with that, that means that those students would perform academically better and would have higher GPAs. So because I could not find that significant association between eating vitamin B6 and the memory test scores, I was looking at my variables and I found some limitation, limitations, and those were that I conducted the test at different times during the day. So one group could have had um, more food before the test, or one group could have, uh, didn't, wouldn't have breakfast at all that morning, and I couldn't control that. And other two variables were caffeine consumption and sleep that would definitely affect the concentration test, but I could not control. And so since I could not control these variables, I am hoping to conduct further research to actually uh, to determine that significant association between eating vitamin B6 and the memory test scores. And so what I hope to do this summer is con um, continue my communication with a Tufts University researcher, and I'm, I'm hoping she will give me guidance to conduct a clinical trial where I'm actually able to manipulate vitamin B6 in the diets of students rather than giving them a questionnaire and having them g give me answers because that wouldn't be as reliable. And so one, I think once I'm able to manipulate vitamin B6 in, in their diets with a vitamin B6 supplement and I'll be able to control their um, sleep habits or eating habits, I think I'll 
uh, be able to find that significant association between eating vitamin B6 and cognition, which is basically what I'm, I've been trying to do for the past two years. So I hope that I've convinced all of you to eat more vitamin B6 because you will have better memory um, skills, better concentration skills, and of course that's what we all want because we want, all want those higher GPAs. So <laughs> those, uh, those are my sources and this is the template that I use for, um, to present my research at a science fair. Uh, yeah.